Hello, I'm Pastor Lauren Corverbius, welcoming you to the Call from the Mountain Prophetic Insights. It's so important that we would understand God is a God who still speaks to his people. But you know, one of the most important things we have to understand as well is we have to be able to understand what God is saying. And sometimes we can even hear a prophecy or go to the scriptures even and find a word and it will read it, but we really don't understand its meaning. Why is that? Well, Isaiah 28 says, whom will he teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those just weaned from the milk, those just drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. It's important to understand the line upon line. You see, we serve a God who shares with us his word, but it's according to our maturity that we can have the level of understanding that's necessary. That's why if we really want to hear from God and also perceive what it is that he's speaking, we have to allow the word of God to work inside of our life. I think about the story of Joseph, how that he had a word from God, and yet as the word of the Lord began to unfold in his life, he found out something. The word of the Lord was going to try him and prepare him for what God had for him. Now, he held on to that word and trusted the Lord, and he saw the fulfillment of the promise of God. But so often time I've observed with people that they miss out on what God has spoken as at least the fulfillment of that word because they lose sight along the way of what it is that God is doing and what God is speaking. And I think the most important thing we have to understand is how that God builds line upon line. He does something and then he adds another level to it. Now, because we have this idea that, well, when God is speaking or Pastor Lauren shares a prophetic insight about what God is doing in the earth today, it's kind of like the whole picture, but that isn't the way it works with God. He builds little by little, and he always follows principles. And of course, those principles are based upon who he is. That's why it's important for us to understand a scripture that says this, the children of Israel knew the acts of God, but Moses knew his ways. You see, the children of Israel stood back and they saw what God did. Moses began to understand because of his relationship with God, why God was doing what he was doing. And that's such an important insight. I've shared even on this program how in the late 1990s, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Lauren, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. As he spoke that word to me, he actually gave me a confirmation that very same week because he said, I'm going to shake, but don't expect it to fall over. And that week, the stock market crashed the first part of the week. By the end of the week, it had come back. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to look at that as an example of what it is that I'm doing. Things are going to look like they're falling apart, but they're not going to fall apart. It's going to be a shaking, but it's not going to be the end of the matter. Now, when God spoke that word to me, I, I saw it as something that was going to come to pass immediately. And so I was looking at what he was speaking and listening and saying, Lord, what am I supposed to be looking for? Well, in time, the Lord began to speak to me. Well, that was the word I gave to you, but I want you to know I'm going to do it little by little. There's going to be a shaking process. It's going to start here. It's going to move over here. But you're going to see that the end result of this is I will indeed shake everything that can be shaken. And so it was important for me to learn from the Holy Spirit the ways of God. That's why I feel like God wants to teach each and every one of us how to understand his voice by letting him speak to us. But also, as we're going along the way, let him speak to us on how he's doing what he's doing and why he's doing what he's doing. Well, that was about 25 years ago, and I have learned so much about the ways of God in that time that I'm quite amazed at how I used to look at things versus how I'm able to look at them now, because now I begin to see things more from the way God does what he does rather than my own expectation or perception on how these things are going to come to pass. But the most important thing I see is how it is necessary for us to recognize that since God does little by little, we have to understand that when the Lord's speaking something to us, it's not the whole ball of wax. Ever since I've been a kid, I'd hear people prophesy, and that's whether they were literally prophesying or whether they were looking at the Bible and preaching or teaching what we call prophetic prophecy based on the scriptures. They oftentimes will see an event and say, this is the event. This is the end of the world, or this is what God is doing right now. And then time passes, and before you know it, it hasn't happened the way they expected. Now, it isn't that they haven't heard, and it isn't always that they misperceive what God is doing, generally speaking. But the problem is, is we often fail to understand how important it is to understand God's ways. Since he builds upon precept, 
hear little, their little, you have to understand part of this is because God is a judge who judges in mercy. That's why in verse 13 it says, but the word of the Lord was to them, precept upon precept, hear little and their little, that they would fall backward, be broken, snared and caught. Now this is speaking about God's judgment. And oftentimes when people are warned about the judgment of God because they can't see the whole picture or the world's not falling apart, they will think, oh, God's not going to judge me or God's not going to judge our nation or God's not going to judge the world. But when you see the little by little principle upon principle concept, you begin to understand. And in this case, it almost sounds as if, well, this is a part of God's plan. If you don't want to believe me, you don't want to receive me, I'll do it in such a, a manner that when the end comes and the judgment comes, that's the end of the matter. And so that's why we have to be perceptive all along the way. And our hearts always have to be open to God so we can say, God, what is it that you're speaking in my life? Or if there's a warning and we're looking at a world that's strained from the ways of God, we'll stand back ourselves and say, Lord, I don't want to be the person that everybody else in the world is walking in the ways of the world, but I want to be that person that hears your voice. Lord, I want to be a person that follows after your commandment. And when we get that attitude, truly, with the right heart, God certainly is going to work in our behalf. And he's going to, line upon line, principle upon principle, change our lives so that we don't fall under this judgment. You see, the world is on its way to judgment. Everything in this world will ultimately be judged. And we don't know the day or the hour. When we see signs, we have to understand, again, it might be just a small sign at this point because God's warning about the things to come. But in his mercy, he's giving people an opportunity to repent. And so because of that, we have to understand how it is that God does what he does. And we have to understand it is his way because that's who he is. And when we begin to understand, like I said about Moses, how he knew the ways of God because he knew God, then that's when we'll begin to properly perceive what's going on in our world today. I believe prophecy is very important. I believe prophetic insight is absolutely necessary for us to navigate the times. But even if we hear a word, and even if we're trying to hear what God is speaking, we have to always also understand how important it is that we continue to give God our heart and continue to walk in what God has for us individually. I'm so glad I serve a merciful God. I'm so glad I serve a loving God. And so that's why my message is always to people, God loves you, God wants to work on your behalf, but I also know enough about his character to understand that there comes the time of judgment, and we have to understand that. In the book of Hebrews, at ch chapter 12, it says, You have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, a numerable company of angels, God who is the judge of all, and also to Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. So God is merciful through the work of Jesus Christ, but ultimately he is the judge. And so we need to maintain this balance so that we're not putting God in one category or the other, but we're understanding, hey, we can get to know him as we open our heart to his way.